Hello, welcome back to Labor Relations Law. Now we have finished discussing Title 1, Title 4, Title 5, and Title 6. Now we will proceed with Title 7 regarding collective bargaining and administration of agreements. So Title 7, collective bargaining and administration of agreement. Now, first is we need to define what is collective bargaining. Now, uh, it is defined as a democratic framework to stabilize the relation between labor and management. To create a climate of sound and stable industrial peace, it is a mutual responsibility of the employer and the union and their legal obligation. So, in other words, collective, collective bargaining is the negotiation between the employer on one hand and the employees represented by their union on the other hand for in order to agree upon or to determine what are the terms and conditions of employment. Now, let us proceed to the phases of collective bargaining. Now, first phase, phase is the negotiations of the contract or the legislative phase. Next is the administration of the contract or the executive phase. Third is the interpretation or application of the contract or the judicial phase. So it's <clears throat> uh, similar to the, I don't know, the, the structural organization of our government which has the legislative branch the executive branch and the judicial branch so in the legislative phase <clears throat> that is where the negotiations of the uh, collective bargaining agreement happen okay so the parties in the negotiations determine or negotiate what should be the terms and conditions that should be included in the collective bargaining agreement. Now, upon uh, coming up with the collective bargaining agreement, the terms and conditions are thereafter be executed or applied. So that is now the administration or of the contract phase or the, ex the executive phase. Now, if there are questions regarding the interpretation or applications of the uh, terms and conditions of the contract or when there are disputes as to how the terms and conditions of the collective bargaining agreement should be applied, then um, it could be interpreted for the parties. So, uh, it is called the judicial phase. Now, um, in common usage, uh, as well as in legal terminology, collective bargaining denotes negotiations looking forward to a collective agreement. However, okay, as we have discussed, the collective bargaining does not end with the execution of the agreement. So it does not end after the parties have come up with the collective bargaining agreement okay hindi lang, hindi lang hanggang doon sa pag come up ng collective bargaining agreement collective bargaining is a continuous process it requires both parties the employer and duly authorized representatives of employees to deal with each other with open and fair minds and sincerely endeavor to fight the obstacles in the process to stabilize employer-employee relationship. Now, let us define what is a collective bargaining agreement or CBA in short. Now, it refers to a contract executed upon request of either the employer or the exclusive bargaining representative of the employees incorporating the agreement reached after negotiations with respect to wages, hours of work, and all other terms and conditions of employment, including proposals for adjusting any grievances or questions under such agreement. So the CBA is the contract 
or the agreement that has uh, that the parties will come up after the negotiation so <clears throat> uh, but uh, remember that a CBA is more than a contract okay so it's not just a contract it is a generalized code to govern a myriad of cases which the parties cannot entirely anticipate it covers the whole employment relationship and describes the rights and duties of the parties so it's uh, the CBA is a system of industrial self-government with the grievance machinery at the very heart of the system the parties solve their problems by molding a system of private law for all the problems which may arise and to provide for their solution in a way which will generally accord the needs and desires of the parties but uh, there are certain requisites or conditions before collective bargaining may proceed okay so <clears throat> these are called the juris jurisdictional preconditions of collective bargaining or what we call the Kyokloi doctrine so it's called Kyokloi doctrine because it came from a case decided by the supreme court uh, entitled Kyokloi versus NLRC GR number 54334 so these <clears throat> preconditions are the requirements before collective bargaining or negotiations are uh, can be conducted okay so first is the uh, possession of the status of majority representation of the employees representative in accordance with any of the means of selection or designation provided for by the labor code now so it means that <clears throat> the labor the legitimate labor organization or the union must be a certified um, collective bargaining representative okay so yung nanalo sa certification election okay so, yun and then the second precondition is a proof of majority representation So, hindi lang basta-basta na uh, may possession of status of majority representation ang isang union. Okay? Para ma makakandak ng collective bargaining agreement. Dapat may evidence din yung uh, union na siya talaga yung nag-possess ng uh, majority representation status. Okay? So, according to Rotenberg, an author of a comment an, an author of uh, a labor relations law that uh, as a natural consequence of this um, precondition and that is the possession of status of, of the status of majority representation is that um, the employer has the right to demand the, as, the asserted bargaining agent proof of its representation of its employees okay so the employer daw i may right to demand the 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 union who wants to represent the employees proof of its possession of the status of majority representation okay so having the right to demonstration of this fact it is not an unfair labor practice for an employer to refuse to negotiate until the asserted bargaining agent has presented reasonable proof of majority representation. It is necessary, however, that such demand may be made in good faith and not merely as a pretext or device for delay or evasion. And now, the la and for the last precondition is a demand to bargain under article 261 paragraph a so under that um, article 261 paragraph a so before uh, the employer may collectively bargain with the uh, collective bargaining representative the employee or or the union must 
make a demand to the employer uh, to start the collective bargaining to start the collective bargaining okay so an employer's duty to recognize and bargain collectively with a union as the collective bargaining representative of his employees does not arise until after the union requests the employer to bargain. Hence, an employer is not in default respecting the duty to bargain until a request therefore has been made. Okay, so now let, let us proceed to the procedure in collective bargaining. So it is provided in Article 261 of the Labor Code. Now, when a party desires to negotiate an agreement, it shall serve a written notice upon the other party with a statement of its proposals. The other party shall make a reply thereto not later than 10 calendar days from receipt of such notice. Okay, so this is the uh, what we refer the demand to uh, collectively bargain. So yung third precondition. Okay, if you could remember. Okay, remember the third precondition, the demand to bargain. Okay, so the 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 union now will now send send a letter to the employer. Uh, with its proposals <clears throat> and that is the start of the collective bargaining or the negotiations now when should the collective bargaining uh, start now <clears throat> um, the collective bargaining or the negotiation should start within 12 months following the determination and certification of the employees exclusive bargaining representative within which the collective bargaining okay within which the collective bargaining should begin so the collective bargaining should begin within 12 months from uh, from the election of the collective bargaining representative so that that 12 month period is what we call the certification year now should differences arise on the basis of such notice and reply either party may request for a conference which shall not which shall begin not later than 10 calendar days from the date of the request so it is oh, it's really possible that there would be um, differences or hindi tanggap ng uh, kabilang party yung proposals ng ibang party okay, ng kabila so in that case a conference should be held now if on the conference the dispute is not settled the board or the board here refers to the National Conciliation and Mediation Board, the NCMB, shall intervene upon request of either or both parties or at its own initiative and immediately call the parties to conciliation meetings. The board shall have the power to issue subpoenas requiring the attendance of the parties to such meetings and it shall be the duty of the parties to participate fully and promptly in the conciliation meetings the board may call during the conciliation proceedings in the board the parties are prohibited from doing any act which may disrupt or impede the early settlement of the disputes and the board shall exert all efforts to settle the disputes amicably and encourage the parties to submit their case to a voluntary arbitrator so again if there are proposals okay here when the proposals and there are offers in the proposals or in the reply which are not acceptable to the parties a conference may be requested by either party okay in order to settle that uh, 
unacceptable terms in the proposals in, or in the reply. Now, if it is not settled in the conference, the NCMB or the National Conciliation and Mediation Board will intervene and call the parties to a conciliation meetings. Okay, so that is more or less the procedure in collective bargaining. Now let us proceed to the duty to bargain collective, collectively. So, okay, so this is its definition. Okay, it is the performance of mutual obligation to meet and convene promptly and expeditiously in good faith for the purpose of negotiating an agreement with respect to wages, hours of work, and all other terms and conditions of employment, including proposals for adjusting any grievances or questions arising under such agreement and executing a contract incorporating such agreements if requested by either party. But such duty does not compel any party to agree to a proposal or to make any concession. Okay, so when there is a collective bargaining agreement, the duty to bargain collectively shall also mean that neither party shall terminate nor modify such agreement during its lifetime. So that is the meaning of the duty to bargain collectively. So take note that, again, take note that um, while uh, this duty to bargain collectively imposes an obligation to the parties to meet and convene with each other in order to bargain, collectively bargain, the uh, terms and conditions that are to be included in the collective bargaining agreement, the duty does not include the or does not compel the parties to agree to every um, proposals of terms and conditions that are raised. Okay, so if it is unacceptable for one of the parties uh, or the offer of one of the parties is unacceptable to the other, then such other party cannot be compelled to accept such proposals. Okay. So, uh, this duty to bargain or to collectively bargain may be violated. Di ba? Uh, it is one, it is considered as one of the unfair labor practices defined under the labor code. Now, the first uh, violation would be the failure or refusal to bargain. Now, this happens when uh, the, the union has already sent a notice or demand to bargain to the employer and the employer just ignores such demand. So, that such uh, act of ignoring the demand of the uh, union can be considered as failure or refusal to bargain. Okay, so that failure or refusal to bargain is considered as, uh, since it is considered as a, a violation of the duty to bargain, then it is an unfair labor practice. Next is uh, evading the mandatory subjects of bargaining. Okay, so what is this? Okay, so these are the examples of mandatory subjects of bargaining. Wages and other types of compensation, including merit increases, working hours and working days, including work shifts, vacations and holidays, bonuses, pensions and retirement plans, seniority, transfer, layoffs, employee workloads, work rules and regulations, rent of company houses, union security agreements. Now, if the employer or the uh, union 
the labor organization uh, evades or refuses to bargain on these uh, subjects, then uh, they are deemed to have evaded uh, the mandatory subjects of bargaining, which is considered as a violation of the duty of the duty to bargain and as a, an unfair labor practice. Okay, so uh, essentially this evading the mandatory subjects of bargaining uh, can be considered as bad faith in bargaining. Okay, so <clears throat> So, next violation is bad faith in bargaining. So, an example of this bad faith in bargaining is or are surface bargaining and blue sky bargaining. Surface bargaining is a sophisticated pretense in the form of apparent bargaining or going through the motions of negotiating without any legal intent to reach an agreement. So, um, the employer, example, would be an employer sitting in the negotiation table, but um, the employer really has no intention to agree or to accept any proposal from the uh, union. So that is surface bar bargaining. So, nagpatik-atik lang siya nga lingkod-lingkod uh, lang siya sa table, pero wala gid siya intention nga uh, makig uh, nga mo agree to the pro to any of the proposals that are uh, sent by the union okay so another is blue sky bargaining is making exaggerated or unreasonable proposals so usually ang mga commit nito are the labor organizations or the union so when they demand or they propose a very high uh, um, benefits for the employees that would be impossible for the employer to cope up with, then uh, that could be considered as a blue sky bargaining. And the last is the employer's act of negotiating with union members individually. That is called bulwarism so next is the terms of a collective bargaining agreement so if we say term okay it refers to the period of the effectivity of the collective bargaining agreement okay so the the length of time as to uh, which the collective bargaining agreement is effective. So, uh, here, the collective bar the terms of the collective bargaining is divided into two. So, the representation aspect and the all other provisions of the CBA. As for the representation aspect, Okay, which refers to the um, refers to the uh, identity and majority status of the union that negotiated the collective bargaining agreement. So for the representation aspect, the term of that the collective bargaining agreement is five years. Okay. But uh, take note of this rule, the contract bar rule, that uh, no petition questioning the majority status of the incumbent bargaining agent shall be entertained and no certification election shall be conducted by the Department of Labor and Employment outside the 60-day period immediately before the date of expiry of such five-year term of the collective bargaining agreement. Okay, so this... 60-day period within which the petition for certification election may be filed is what we call the freedom 
period. Okay, so to illustrate this representation aspect, contract bar rule, and freedom period, okay, so this, we have this. Okay, so the representation aspect of the CBA would be five years. Okay, this whole green here is for the five years. Now, the 60 days, so this, the end here is the expiration of the representation aspect, the term of the representation aspect of the collective bargaining agreement, the end of this green. Now, the 60 days before the end or the expiry of the representation aspect is what we call the freedom period. So, sa during uh, period, okay, this is the only time within which the certification election may be filed. So, hindi pwede na dito i-file, okay, before sa 60 day Sa 60 days, dito i-file ang petition for certification election or after the 60 days of the, certific of the representation aspect. Kung mulapas na sa 60 days, then the, the, uh, collect the terms of the collective bargaining agreement should uh, continue to remain enforced or renewed. Okay? And another five years would be uh, should be waited again before uh, a certification election can be conducted. Okay? So for the all other provisions of the collective bargaining agreement, okay, those provisions not included in the representation aspect, the terms and conditions of employment, etc., are uh, shall have a term of three years. Now, an, an important rule provided in the uh, labor code or under Title 7 is this uh, prohibition against injunction. Okay, so no temporary or permanent injunction or restraining order in any case involving or growing out of labor disputes shall be issued by any court or other entity, except as otherwise provided in Articles 225 and 278 of the Labor Code. So that is the general rule. Hindi pwede na mag mag ask sa court or ang court mag issue ng injunction uh, in any labor dispute okay why bakit hindi pwede na mag issue ng injunction okay so the labor injunction is an employer's most effective remedy in a labor dispute. However, narrow its scope and form, the issuance of an injunction is for any purpose in a labor dispute will generally tip the scales of the controversy. The issuance of an injunction in the early phases of a strike can critically sway the balance of economic struggle against the union. Enforced by the court's contempt powers, even a preliminary injunction is an effectual strike-breaking weapon because so much time ordinarily elapses between the issuance of preliminary injunction and the time when a final decree can be reviewed on appeal. Labor injunctions have the deceptive appeal of the quick and easy solution, and therein lies their danger. For disputes between workers and employers, now often complicated by internecine disputes among workers themselves, are not always of, of a comparable simplicity. Consequently, injunctions have generally not proved to be an effective means of settling labor disputes. So, but that, but that policy is merely a a general rule. There. 
uh, certainly instances wherein an injunction may be issued by the court in labor disputes. For example, in the case of the Public Flour Mills Workers Association versus Reyes, GR number L-21378. So an injunction may be issued by ordinary courts where there is no labor dispute existing between the parties. Because the situation in this case is that the picket affected not only the employer but also business operations of other establishments owned by third parties. So, wala na silang kinalaman doon sa strike na ginawa ng union or ng employees. And, uh, pero, because of such strike, nadamay yung uh, business nila. Hindi, hindi sila makapag-operate normally because of the strike made by the employees. So, in that case, the Supreme Court ruled that the yung mga tao na nadamay, yung mga establishments na nadamay ng uh, picketing or strike na ginawa ng employees ng isang establishment may file or may pray for the issuance of an injunction to stop the strike or the picketing made by the employees. So, we will stop our discussion uh, on collective bargaining and, and administration of agreements uh, for this video here but uh, we will continue uh, title 7 uh, in another video